guys welcome back to some more afk arena today we're over on the test account we're going to be checking out the brand new hypogen hero but overall guys a lot of players are saying she is very similar to um to lucretia and she's going to work in the same functionality a lot of players are saying she looks like she is absolutely trash um and hoping that they do not have to build her so i'm going to try this out now i was thinking about some of the skills and abilities in here and one because she goes on the enemy side that is going to be um, one of the more difficult parts to kind of look at with her going on the enemy side um, chances are that she is going to go over there and just die now we've seen that similar with Taylene, even the awakened version of Taylene, um going on the enemy side turning into a fireball when you start getting into higher level deficiencies just literally right off the bat so we know that we start at 360 for the enemy so i'm going to take this to I think 510, probably 510. So we got 150 level deficiencies. And honestly, I, I I don't know how much or how the level deficiency with her is going to work. I, I don't know if we're going to work her front line. So I want to run through, guys, and I want to see running her in the formations that they set. So these are all preset formations. I haven't been in here yet. Um, I want to see the invade team. I think the invade team is going to be really good, but a lot of players have also set the crowd control team. So even here we have a heavy crowd control as well as damage. I want to see kind of the functionality and the viability of her, which is the reason why I do want to run her. So she has the top combat rating. You could see that right there. Um, she did get Halos's cube right off the bat, which is very cool to see. Ran her with Rosaline as well which gives, I mean, when you look at the damage, this is kind of the interesting part. So I know the mechanic of her fundamentally has changed. Um, damage doesn't seem to be huge, but the Awakened version of Solus, of course, doing a ton of damage versus her being completely built out. And I want to see that ultimate ability. Again, this one, the Invade team, was one I definitely wanted to try because as a mage, she is going straight to the enemy side. I think that was the alt. Maybe not, but here we have four flames. And there we go, guys. So that time we got her to do some damage. 118 million. Again, this is a team that I thought I was thinking about the team dynamics um, and kind of the setup last night. Because remember, the flames come with the enemies that die um, is where we're getting those flames. But that's pretty good, guys. 118 million. Um, Within the cursed realm, the enemies will not die. Now that's one of the issues that we do see with the awakened version of Thane is because the enemies within the formation do not die, it's a little bit of a different dynamic because again, if they do not die, then you're, you're not gonna get any of these flames. You're not gonna get a lot of the damage out of there if the enemies do not die. Even there guys running kind of head in head, but look at that. Our tank picks up all of the damage in there, which again, we knew that he would. Um, other thing to really note with this hero is when you look at the bonuses, now it shows that one defensive, which is her four, I thought everyone was regarded as hypogen heroes, but it might be because of the SP effect we have in here. There we go. No, maybe not. Because I, I thought they were regarded as hypogens and they would get the buff out of here. I'm going to have to look at that because I, I thought that was the case. That it we wouldn't have the four Greyborn buffs in the one single buff up here. And I thought it just didn't apply to Dimensionals and Celestials. But even here running with um, the Awakened version of Baden. Look at the giant flame, guys, when she dies. That is really, really cool looking. And look at the damage there, guys. 123 million. It seems to be very situational. Um, and here, Mulan, we are starting to see Mulan into a lot of formations. Or maybe it only applies to Celestials and Dimensionals. I wonder if I might have that backwards. Boom, there's the ultimate ability. You got four kills out of there. Yeah, 132 million damage. But the question is, what does it look like when we start getting into the higher deficiencies? Because even here one, let's see, because this one was a dimensional team. 
and still it, it gave us those buffs now again i thought it got rid of those um and it gave us more of the hydrogen buffs but let's see guys so this is running a 200 level deficiency which again is pretty high a lot of game modes but i want to see what it looks like with her kind of survivability boom there's the ultimate I don't know i mean that's looking pretty solid in that formation 315 million even solace so it seems like it is going to take a little while for her to get the damage up to get the buffs up and everything else again i i like the invade team because remember guys the combination of scrag with um materia will give her the energy, will give her the attack, will also give her the mitigation factor. So, so she's getting a lot from the invade team, which again, could work very, very well. Running Salakai back there. As much as kind of a lot of players overlooked Salakai, um, there we go, guys. Look at that, 652 million damage. Okay, pretty pretty decent. And again, this is not taking an effect. Um, artifacts on the hero, and this also does have a much, much lower tree. So, I mean, if your mage tree is running at, you know, 107, 120, 150, 180, whatever it may be, um, of course, the damage is going to be significantly amplified higher. But I mean, she's literally putting everyone together right in that back. Boom, there's the ultimate ability. Anissa and Rook and her are going to be huge. Guys, look at this. Literally stacking all of the flames, stacking all of the heroes on there. 222 million damage. That is pretty solid. Again, this Graveborn team. And again, a, a lot of players were on the fence with her viability. So right there, she is dead. And I know you're, you're, there has to be a certain amount of abilities used. And there she is back to life. Everyone died. She is back to life, guys. See, now that's my thought with, with the battle. Um is there has to be a certain amount of abilities that have been used or if your entire team dies. So when the rest of the team dies, she, and look at the recovery guys, she doesn't seem like she's gonna come up in battle, but as soon as Baden drops, she is reborn. Boom, there we go. She does the crowd control there. And it seems like her energy just goes crazy if you've seen it in there. Again, these are stagnant formations. Um, we've talked about this before. So if I run the same team over and over, um, the outcome's not gonna change unless I change something in there. See right there, she is. Everyone dies, she comes back to life. She's got the fear, got the alt. Boom, ulted again and took everyone out, guys. Now. Another thing that a lot of players were looking at, so 584 million, um, is when we were doing the trial version, there was only a limited number of flames. I, I want to stop it and kind of show you what I'm talking about. So there should be one flame for the heroes that die. So there she is dead. There's flames already popping up. You can see a flame right here. Then, of course, she's reborn. And the viability of that might work pretty well with her coming back up. Oh, I can't pop one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven flames out on the board. Which again, it, it seems like the viability of this hero is pretty decent. It, it is pretty decent. Let me look at the SP. All heroes that are not dimensionals or celestials will be regarded by Materia as hypogens. Receive hypogen factional bonuses as in combat buffs and receive 25% bonus damage against Celestials. See, that's what I thought. So they are regarded 
buy her as hypogens receive hypogen factional bonuses they don't i mean these are the hypogen faction bonuses but i maybe it's just not displaying correctly or maybe i'm again kind of reading something wrong and then bonus damage against the celestials affected allied heroes will also gain 10 proficiency yeah i'm not sure again if that's not working correctly or not displaying correctly but guys mulan again the, the viability of the hero guys if you didn't build mulan it seems like she is starting to show up everywhere guys and it's working i mean we're at 200 level efficiency and it doesn't seem to be really any problem at all there we go so she died again we do have the little countdown flames Rio 9 so she is doing some some pretty decent damage so overall guys um it, it seems like there are going to be a lot of formations again I just wanted to run through it see exactly what she looks like how the build this again is a, is a little confusing when there is only one um why it's not displaying the buffs I don't know if they're getting the buffs but how it is displaying the buffs then again this smoldering flame um with the countdown I don't know how it's going to be affected within the curse realm because again, that's the problem we had with the Awakened version of Thane, is the Cursed Realm, the heroes do not die. So it is a little bit different with this countdown because they will never get this countdown timer um, on the enemy side because again, you don't take their hit points down. So we're going to have to see exactly how that looks. So, all right, guys, that'll do it for the test day for um, Materia. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.